Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. Today we're at the Fisherman and Taglio or Geoglyph near Baus, Arizona. Yep, and what it is is it's a big giant formation in the ground that's been here for who knows how long. They have no idea. So you can't see it walking by it, but it was discovered by a pilot in 1932. And there's several of these intaglios, or what's the other word? Geoglyphs. 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 On the ground that you walk past, it, you can't really see it. We're out here with the drone. We'll show you what it looks like. Thought to be the god Kumistamo stabbing his spear into the ground to create the Colorado River. So we're going to tell you more about that and other things that you can find out here right near Quartzsite. Quartzsite Arizona history can be found in its rock formations dating back to prehistoric times, but this episode will tell you about some rock formations, etchings, and geoglyphs from more recent history that you can still see today within just a few miles of town. The Baus Fisherman and Taglio can be found along Plumosa Road between Quartzsite and the town of Baus. This one, as well as the Blythe and Taglios, are between 450 and 2,000 years old. Scientists continue to attempt to date these intaglios as they develop new radiocarbon dating technologies. It's hard to grasp just how large these geoglyphs are without an aerial view to realize these were made by people technically attached to the earth. So the man spearing the fish is said to be the god Kumastamo, who stabbed his spear into the earth and that's what created the Colorado River. So the first sighting of this, because you really don't see anything flat when you're walking by, you really wouldn't notice it. But a pilot named George Palmer in 1932 came across this and that was his view. And I think there's a series of these here somewhere. Um, I don't know how to find the other ones, but he saw all of them. <laughs> That's TV. That's YouTube. That's, right. yeah. That's that. They were made by removing the closely packed, interlocking, dark colored rock covering the desert floor here. This exposed the lighter surface beneath and helped them to last all this time. Today's Mojave and Quechan people report that these geoglyphs played an active role in certain tribal rites and represent creators. To the upper left of the fisherman is what was assumed to be a flying bird. However, tribal sources say it is instead a sky serpent, often called a feathered serpent. This is a symbol of the creator who descended from the sky world to earth and died there, then was reborn before ascending back to the sky. All of the tribes living along the Colorado River honor these intaglios. Just a short distance south of Quartzsite, on the east side of Tyson Wash, adjacent to the long-term visitor area of the same name, you'll discover a series of Indian grinding holes and petroglyphs, some of which are still quite clear all these years later. We caravan from our campsite in LTVA South, across Highway 95, into the Tyson Wash LTVA, following friends in off-road vehicles. We cautiously drove our toad, a 2011 four-wheel drive Honda CRV that does not have high clearance. We chose this vehicle as our towed vehicle because it can be flat towed and has good gas mileage. Definitely not for any serious off-road driving. 
We're showing you the difficulties of the trail as it was when we did this in early 2023. Tyson Wash and several tributaries are usually dry, but they fill rapidly and flow towards the Colorado River when it rains. This trail is used a lot and since it hadn't rained in a while, it was hard packed for most of the way. However, there is also desert scrub that could scratch your vehicle and some areas of loose sand to watch for. Encountering some soft sand areas, we parked and walked the rest of the way. So we took the toad on a Jeep trail and we didn't have to put it in four wheel drive. And we're here to see some sights. We soon found some easily reachable natural caves in the rocky outcroppings, which explains why this spot was first inhabited perhaps as much as a thousand years ago. Ah, is this the little cave? This is the little cave. Okay. Okay. It's about deep. Do we care enough. about the bear? <laughs> it's about deep enough that you could lay down in there and feel like you're protected. Yeah, well, yeah. You it doesn't look like cool. it goes back yeah. very far. We're the first people to explore this cave. <laughs> no one's ever seen it. We think Batman's in here, but we're not sure. Um, will you come back out safe or will something get you? Um, I'm not sure. Probably Just, have, there have been here. stories. I hope you have extra rope because it's a long climb down in here. <laughs> here, bring me the camera so I can show what it looks like down there. There you go. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you, see you later. All right. <laughs> so is there, I see rodent I don't see Pat. Bad. 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 Yeah, see, now Bad that can't go in the video. So, and there's actually a hole on the other side of the yeah. trail. Oh, I see it! Just around the corner, we found Native American petroglyphs, which are art and pictographs sketched into the rock, telling bits and pieces of these indigenous people's story. Look, a real life dune buggy. It's just like the beach. Look, it's just like the beach. We've got a dune buggy. Yeah, that's an old school. I know. <laughs> probably should have paid attention to how you came up. You got this, Linda. You are a pro. <laughs> We had to climb a bit to find the grinding holes, which are scattered about the rocky edges. Toad? Yeah. Ew. Ew. He's kind of scary looking. Look at this one over here. Grinding bowl. There's quite a few. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So do they... These holes are large distinct depressions in the rock from many years of preparing meals, grinding seeds, beans, and corn to make them easier to eat. This is also the site of the original quartzite, which was washed away in a flood and subsequently rebuilt on higher ground at its present location. It's said that a safe of gold lies buried beneath the sand at the bottom of Tyson Wash, somewhere near this spot having been carried away in the Great Flood. The quartzite rock alignment has gained popularity recently due to the access of drones. The rock layout is in perfect condition for almost a hundred years old, and it's pretty cool to see. See the ridges on the ground? It spells out quartzite. I haven't seen it yet, but that's what I've been told. Oh yeah, 
we're on the wrong side of it, we're looking down on it. A huge compass and the hundred foot long name quartzite, arrows and the number 11 is spelled out with rocks on the desert floor. Q, U, feel like a cheerleader. A, E, what does it spell? And then what's this? Is this an arrow? So what is this? It's a big giant circle and an arrow and one one or I I. But then there's more over here. Most of the stories told of the history of the quartzite rock alignment are wrong. Dozens of blogs and YouTube videos state it was built for World War II pilot training but it was actually created much earlier than that. The incorrect thinking was in regards to Connor Airfield, which was built by Hollywood silent film actor Buck Connors. Connor Airfield was used during World War II for training and keeping up flying hours to maintain licenses. Connor Airfield was also a location where women gained their pilot license so they could assist in plane and cargo transport for the military as part of the WASP program. They trained in small planes that flew low and slow, and they would have been able to see these 13-foot letters in the rock alignment. However, these alignments, as they're called, actually began about 20 years earlier with motorized flight, and they gave directions to airfields, usually for pilots delivering the mail. They spelled out an airfield's name, directions, and the miles to them. It feels so alien, you know? Yeah. Mike says it's Mars with trees. Yeah, That's and then the, the drone just makes you feel like you're in some sci-fi thing. Uh, right. Although the alignment points in the general direction of the town of Quartzite, it does not point to Connor Airfield. The information found from the alignment points to a different airfield, just southeast of the current I-10 and Highway 95 intersection. It was listed in the 1920s as Quartzite Field Auxiliary, having two landing strips, one 2,100 feet and the other 1,600 feet, and in a T-shape. This airfield was gone by 1938. After that, only Connor Field shows on maps, but it was located a bit southwest of the same intersection. To confuse history even more, Connor Field was renamed Quartzite Field in 1947. But again, the arrow only vaguely points to that airfield and is still three miles off. Apparently, the property that was originally Connor Airfield and then became the now closed Quartzite Airport is for sale. It comes with a huge collection of broken down antique cars, planes, trucks, and trailers. I'll put a link in the description. Hey Roamers, we really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you remember, if you're not yet a subscriber, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And do ring that bell, that way you'll be notified each time we upload a new video. And make sure to leave a comment, that way you can be part of the conversation. Until next time. We'll see ya. See ya. Ah! Hey Roamers, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Roaming with Rosie. For more information regarding this video, please check out the links in the video description below as well as products and equipment we use and recommend. We sometimes do receive a small commission when you use our links for purchases, which is a great way at no additional cost to you to help offset some of our production costs. Thank you so much for watching and sharing our videos and subscribing to Roaming with Rosie. We'd love to hear from you and encourage your comments and questions. Until next time, see ya.